Hey, so you managed to reach the final exercise of the first chapter of the Piscine. Congrats to you. And we are ready to tackle the last one, the last beast, the final boss. Let's check it out. We have this time to create a function that displays all different combinations of n numbers by ascending board. We already made a similar exercise, but we add only three digits. This time we have to deal with the variable number, which is in the range of one to nine. So the final output has to be something like that. If n is equal to two, we have this series of numbers in ascending order, like the exercise we made. And here we have the prototype. So this function won't return any value and takes an input, which is uh, the number of figures, the number of digits. Okay, as usual, let's dive into the code. Here I have all my program. As you can see, it's kind of longish because it is the trickiest one, of course. The reason it is long it's that it is plenty of comments, as you can see, because I want you to really understand what is going on. This is the purpose of this, these videos, of course. So first of all, let's try to compile and run this program initially with the value of four. So I want to run this program with four digits. Let's check it out. So compile and run. Here it comes. As you can see, I have my output. We have initially 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is, of course, the first combo by ascending order. And, and this program ends with 6, 7, 8, 9, which is the last configuration of my combo four digit, maintaining the ascending property. And in between of the two states, we have all the middle values. As you can see, we jump here from 0, 1, 2, 9 to 0, 1, 3, 4, which, of course, is the next value if you want to maintain the ascending property. And basically, that's it. Now, here I have in my main uh, all the combos for all the other digits. Let's check them out very briefly so you can appreciate the output of uh, this program in all its glory. Here it comes. I save and I quit the new program. Okay. And then basically I uh, compile and run like before. Here you see all the combos, right? When we give to the program the input zero, we get this prompt that states insert uh, an integer from uh, one to nine essentially when the input is one i have this combo of course we have zero one two to nine we have only one digit to deal with or and of course this is the way it is when we have two digits look at it we have this combo zero nine and then one two of course the ascending property we end with eight and nine and basically this is the rule for all the combos and that's the way it is until we reach the final which is 10 elements the, the exercise doesn't require 10 uh, values 10 digits but i did i did the same the principle is the same so who cares i did also for 10 symbols the last one required by the exercise is this one when we have nine digits and this is the combo okay so we have all the combos in a very bold fashion depending on the input now we have to understand what the heck is going on now let's start again our program with only my print combination four Let's decipher the print combination function uh, in all its constituents, in all its atomical parts. We declare initially two arrays that I've called V, stands for vector or values, as you want. The other one is vector values max. These two arrays contain 10 elements. Why 10 elements? Well, because the maximum value that the function has to handle is 9. I've put 10 because I want to handle also 10 values, but I could have used nine here, would, it would have been the same. I use 10 because I want to handle all the symbols, all the digits from zero to nine, so 10 symbols. Here I declare an integer, which is a flag, and then I declare another integer that I've called a base. Later you will understand what this means. Then an if statement, if n is less or equal to zero, or n is major, not equal, only major to 10, what is going to happen? Well, I just write the prompt. You remember the prompt that states insert an integer in this range. As you can see, I have my write function here with the buffer, which is a string constant, and the number of bytes I want to flush in the standard output from this buffer. And then basically the function ends. So if I have an input to the function, which is not in the range 1 to 10, the function aborts. So I have this prompt that is going to be flushed in the standard output and everything ends. If it is not the case, what is going to happen? So if I have a number which is in the range 1 to 10, I do this for loop. Of course, you cannot use the for loop in, uh, in 
in the PC, but you can change the for loop in a while loop very easily. So I'm sure you can do this. Here I've used the for loop because it is more intelligible, it is more compact, easy to understand, and you are here just to understand how the algorithm works. So what do I do? For this amount of times, so for n times, n is the value that I get as an input. So in this case, it's gonna be four. For four times, what do you do? You put in the array, in position i, so in the first loop is gonna be zero, the value i plus 48, okay? So basically, I initialize my array with the values, with the char values from zero to n minus one. Zero, one, two, and three, right? This is pretty easy. This 48, understood is just a way to change an integer to a chart so it is pretty straightforward so i have my array v that has the first four elements zero one two and three then i initialize my array max with this expression let's try to decipher it i have 10 minus n what is what is 10 minus n well it is 10 minus 4 so it's going to be 6 plus i which in the first loop is going to be 0 plus 48 so this expression in the first loop is going to resolve in the char 6, in the second loop in the char 7, then char 8, then char 9. Do you understand what it is? Well, these two arrays are the initial state that I want to flush out in the standard output and the final state because I have 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we are working with the value 4, so in this specific case it's 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is the maximum value that I can reach at every level. Six, seven, eight, nine. Let's understand it better. The first array, as you can see, is this one. Zero, one, two, and three. So the initial state of my series of my combos. And Vmax is this state here. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I have initial and final states. And in between there is all the rest that we are gonna check how it works. Okay, by now you understood what is going on. So Long story short, I create my initial and final state and I stock inside my two arrays that I call V and Vmax. Then what do I do? Well, I just print my array. I just print my array with a subroutine that I created. Later, you will see. I know, I'm sure that at this level, the array is already in ascending order because I have this for loop that every time increase i plus one. So I have zero, one, two, and three at the first iteration. And that's for sure. Okay, so I immediately print my array, I repeat myself, and then we jump into the real meat of this algorithm. Let's check it properly. Here I say, while v in position zero is different than v max in position zero. So the maximum value that this v in position zero can reach has to be different to the value max in position zero. Okay, so until this condition is not met, what is gonna happen? The idea behind my algorithm is pretty simple. I have my array with all the values, and every time I search for the value that has not reached the maximum value. Let's try to understand it better. I say flag, the value flag is equal to n minus one. In our case, n is four, so n minus one is three. So what is this flag? Well, this flag is the last position of the arrays. This value is three, of course, and this is the last value of my array, specific in this case for four digits. Then I say, while the value which is in the position of my array v is equal to the value which is found in the same position in the array v max, what do you do? You decrease the flag. Try to understand this code very well. So you have the flag which initially is in position three. I assume that the value that I have to change is in the last position of my array. This is going to happen for every iteration. Then I say, is this value already in its maximum value? This I can see thanks to the Vmax array, right? If this value is equal to its maximum configuration, what do you do? You just decrease the flag. So you decrease the position that you're going to check. And you do this until you find the value that you want to change. So you find the value that is not in its maximum state. You understood perfectly, I'm sure. So let me repeat. With these three lines, I search my value sentinel. So the value that is not already in its maximum configuration. Perfect. Then I say, okay, flag has to be in the position of my sentinel now. I reached a value that I need to change. What do I do? I say, 
in my array v with all the values in the position flag so where there is the value that i have to change make an increase by one here is written increase by one the value which is selectioned by the flag okay and then what do i do i save this value in my base so i save the increased value of my sentinel and then what do i do well i say the value on the right of my sentinel has to be in ascending order i need to maintain the ascending property of all the values which are on the right of my sentinel try to visualize this and i'm sure you will understand so i say while the flag is minor to n and i recall to you in our hypothetical case is four so until the flag is maximum three namely the last position of my array what do you do you increase all the values that you find so i say first of all plus plus base so i increase by one by base base is equal to the value of my sentinel and then i put this value where do i put in my array v in the position flag plus one you can see here there is a plus plus which is a prefix increase so i put the value refreshed in my position exactly after the sentinel this is all there is in this code in these two lines and then again i print my array because i'm sure i have my ascending property maintained and basically that's it at the following iteration i say i've reached already my final state namely v position zero is is equal to the value max in position zero no it is not so what do i do i start from the beginning i restart from the last position of my array then i say search please search uh, the value that i have to increase when you find it just increase it and save this value then set all the following values after the sentinel to plus one at every step and then just print the array that's basically it for the algorithm it is not very simple i think but spend some time try to really visualize this algorithm try to understand it that's all there is here i have some theory behind uh, the, this algorithm that we're gonna understand together the first combination has all digits set to their minimum value starting at zero for the leftmost digit for four digits so we have zero one two and three we are here here i create my array with zero one two and three then i say the last combination has all digits set to their maximum value starting at 10 minus n in our case 10 minus 4 is equal to 6 for an n digit number so we have 6 7 8 9 for this array we are here here i create these two arrays v and v max initial state final state then we have the combinations in between are found by incrementing the previous combination this involves a search from right to left looking for the rightmost digit that is not at its maximum value look carefully please you have 0, 5, 8, 9. this five here is the rightmost digit that can be incremented you search you start from the very big the very last value which is in position three nine is this value at its maximum value yes it is is eight at x maximum value yes of course is five at x maximum value no it is not here i have seven as a maximum value so what do i do for code comparison we are here so i search my value i search my five which is in position one in this case and i say okay i found my sentinel position then i form the next combination by incrementing the digits and setting all digits to its right to one more than the previous digit so this is what i do i increment the five to the six and then i set all the value next to him to one more so seven and eight and that's basically it and this is all there is for this algorithm essentially this is the part when i increase by one the current position and then i increase all the subsequent digits one plus one plus two plus three plus four and so forth respecting to the sentinel and then i just print my array easy peasy was it difficult i don't know you tell me <laughs> let's check it out my print array function i have here my print array function that takes a pointer to char in this case i can write uh, in this fashion i can write also like this because when you pass an array to a function it it is converted to a pointer never mind you don't have to understand it now then i have my size of the array and i have uh, a flag which is last that you will see what it means i declare an integer i then i say are we in the last position namely is the value in position zero equal to the last value 
the last value is uh, six for our four, right? We have mean max in position zero, which is six. So I say, is the value in position zero equal to six in my case? Well, in that case, you, you write all the elements uh, inside the array, and then you just write a point and a new line. If we are not in the last position, that I know because we skip this if statement, what do you do? You just write all the elements in my vector, and then you print a comma and a space. Well, that's it, my friend. You complete it. Let's try to rerun my program with all the combination so you can appreciate once more how it works. So we have compile and run. Here it comes all the combos. So we really we start with the first state in our combination for four. We end with the last combination, which is six, seven, eight, nine. As you can see here, the six is a value that I use uh, like a flag because when when I have this value, I know that this is the last combination if I want to maintain the ascending flag. Okay, it works for every values. I repeat to you till ten. Of course, it works also with ten values, even though the exercise doesn't require it. For the ten, of course, I have only one combo that maintains the ascending property. I have all the values from zero to nine, and that's it.